As always, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to comment, then please do. Also, if you want to ask any questions, then please ask away. If you want to share this video, then please feel free to do so. And please make sure you subscribe so that you get the latest tech videos of tips and tricks and anything Junos tech related. Hi and welcome to this tips and tricks Junos video. So if you log in as a user that is already configured, you will be better get placed into operational mode that can be recognized by this arrow to the right. If you logged in as root, you will automatically be put at the shell prompt and you will have to type CLI to get into this operational mode as root. Now, operational mode is different from the configuration mode so if you go into configuration mode you will know when you are by the hash sign as shown to exit back to operational mode we just type exit if you want to start the shell from a user we simply type start shell and we get put to the shell prompt and if we type pwd which stands for present working directory we see that we are in our var home and it's my username and this will be the username of whoever is logged in and as per what I just mentioned about root we have to type CLI to get back to operational mode. We can use four different methods to get into configuration mode so we can type configure and we'll exit from that we can type edit we will exit from that we can type configure private this allows us to have our own private configuration so we don't get mixed configuration with other people that may be configuring the same system at the same time and not be telling you we can also configure exclusive this allows us to configure the system and not allow anybody else to configure the system at the same time that we are. Once we've set a command and we have one on our candidate, and I'll explain the candidate in a moment with this, we can use various different commits. So we can check, we can do a commit check. That will check what our changes are and it will tell us if it succeeds and it will also tell us if there's an error. We can also do a commit confirmed. The default for this is 10 minutes. What commit confirmed means is, is that the changes that we have made will be rolled back. This is particularly useful if you're working remotely and you accidentally commit something where you are, end up being disconnected. It will automatically roll back. As I said, the default is 10. But if we have a look, we can actually give a number of minutes. We can also give a time. We can also do a synchronization. We can also do a comment. To confirm the changes that we've made and ensure that nobody else has done any changes at the same time, we can do a show pipe compare. It's important to note that we do this from config mode. If we do a command that we don't necessarily want to keep, we have something called rollback. So if I put in here set interfaces GE-000, unit zero, family inet address 192.168.1.1 forward slash 24, but I actually don't want that. So I can do a show compare. And it shows me that this is all I'm adding. The plus tells me I'm adding, a minus would tell me I'm deleting. I don't want that though. So rather than me having to delete any commands that I've put in, I can simply do a rollback zero. And now if I do a show compare, there's nothing there on the candidate configuration. This would be the candidate. In other words, what has not yet been committed. If I do a rollback one, it will take me to the last commit. If I do a rollback two, it will take me back to two commits ago, rollback three, three commits ago, and so on all the way up to 50. We can't go back any further than 50. We can also use the star 
as a wild card, which is used in most operating systems. So, for example, if we do the equivalent of show IP in brief, which is Cisco, so the equivalent in Juniper is show interfaces terse, we have all the interfaces there. However, if we just wanted to show particular interfaces, we can do show interfaces terse let's just say we just want to look at the ge interfaces we can use the star there and it will just show us the ge interfaces as we see here okay we can do that with xe we can do that with the aggregated ethernet so we could do an up arrow and we could do ae star and that will just show the aggregated ethernet as we can see here so the star key is a good command for a wildcard for showing different things. Okay, it can be used in a multiple different situations. If we want to troubleshoot at layer three, we can use the ARP command. So we can do a show ARP. Okay, and it brings us up our information. We don't see much in here because I don't really have anything switched on or attached to the system, so to speak, at the moment. What we can do is we can also speed this up when we have a large ARP table by using the no resolve command, which can be used again in multiple different situations where we cancel out the DNS resolution. So it speeds it up. So we can do a show ARP no resolve as an example. The readout is slightly different as you can see here. However, that does speed things up. So if we were to use the monitor traffic interface uh, GE-001, no resolve, any packet that comes in on that interface that we want to see live on the screen, which is what the monitor command gives us, it will not try and do a DNS resolution to each one of those packets of data that comes in. Okay, the network's down anyway on GE001 because I don't have anything attached to it at the moment. But this would monitor traffic on that particular interface, but the no resolve would stop it doing any DNS resolution. If we were on a layer two device, we could look at the MAC tables. Now, on a layer two device, it is show Ethernet dash switching table. That's for the layer two switches. That command isn't available on this because it's a VMX and it's a layer three device. So on a layer three device, we use the command show bridge Mac table. So show bridge Mac table. But there'll be nothing in there because, again, I don't have anything connected to this at the moment and I don't have any bridges configured. But that is how you would see the layer two information on a layer three system. If we go into configure mode and we want to go to a particular stanza, a particular stanza is an area where it's the equivalent of doing, let's say, uh, an interface command on Cisco. So we could do set interfaces, GE-001, unit zero, family inet address, and we could put in an IP address of whatever you want to put in there. And that would be the address. Now, we can do that like this. So every command could be the same as this. Or we could do an edit command to the stanza. So we do an edit interfaces. GE-001 unit 0. And you'll notice that we are under the edit. So now to save having to keep typing set interfaces GE, we don't have to. We are already at this level. So everything else can be done under there. So we can do a set family inet address, for example. So that saves us having to type in that. Now, if we want to go up a level to put a description on just the GE001 interface, we can do up. And that takes us up a level. You notice we're no longer in unit zero, which is a sub interface. We're actually at the main interface itself. If we want to go back to the top level, we just simply type top. And we're now back at the main configuration mode. To view the routing table, we just simply do a show route. 
if we want to see a route to a particular destination, we do a show route and then the destination. So here, for example, I'll choose 192.168.16.5. And it shows us that particular information here. If we want to see a route of a particular protocol, we do show OSPF route. For example, that will show us OSPF. We could do the same with BGP is is rip etc to complete a word as per like cisco and any other system we can simply do show insert now if i press the space bar it'll do it for me i could also tab and that will also complete the word for me we can use that in any scenario to complete words that we don't want to type the whole thing in to gracefully shut down the system so that it's safe to unplug the power, we can do a request system halt. Okay, that will do a graceful shutdown. We can also do a system reboot in minutes when we request a system reboot. If we request a system reboot by itself, it will do it immediately. Or we can do a request system reboot and if we do the question mark it will allow us to put a time in there of when we want to do a reboot so we just do the in as it states here and the number of minutes we want before that reboot is committed we can also do a reboot at so we can tell it a time that we want it to reboot so we can do a request system reboot at and it will ask you for a time so if we put 1600 that would be at four o'clock in the afternoon 4 p.m so you can actually request a time for it to be rebooted to get device information such as a serial number you can do show chassis routing engine so we do a show chassis routing engine and this gives us quite a lot of information with regards to our system. We can also do a show version as per Cisco that gives us all information regarding the Junos version. We can also have a look at our FBCs by doing a show chassis FPC. This is a VMX, so we'll only see the one that is online that's always in a testing state. But if you've got various FPCs in there, this also tells you your port number. So your port number will be the FPC position, the FPC number and the port number within that system. To get environmental information, such as temperatures, etc., we can do a show chassis environment. Uh, you won't see anything on here because, again, it's a VMX, but in a live system, uh, a bare metal system, you will see all those temperatures and other information that you want to see. To move the cursor about, we can use control and key functions. So if I put in here set interfaces, GE-001, and I say, oh, I need to go back to the beginning of the line. We can do control A and that takes us back to the beginning. If we want to go to the end of the command line, we can use control E and that takes us to the end of the command line. That ends tips and tricks tutorial part one. There are many, many tips and tricks that I could give you, but this video would be over an hour long and these are meant to be short, quick videos. So please hit the subscribe button so that you can get the updated tips and tricks videos as they come out and also other lovely Juniper information as well as sysadmin information that will be coming your way soon as well. Hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you've got any questions and once again hit that subscribe button and see you soon.